Hello and welcome to episode 2 of my beginner's guide, how to build your own gaming PC series. If you missed episode 1, you will be relieved to know that I did not talk about midi chlorines, pod racing, or Jar Jar Binks. I did however share some of the stuff I've learned from building my own PCs over the past 12 years that I feel will arm first time builders with information that they'll need to make a more informed buying decision while they're shopping for a new CPU, motherboard, and memory. If you are interested in checking out episode 1, you can just click right up here to give it a look. And for those of you building a new system or just upgrading your current rig looking for a tutorial on how to properly install uh, a new CPU and or memory, uh, that's what we're doing in this video, so let's do it! The very first thing you're going to want to do is place your motherboard onto a non-conductive surface. The box your motherboard came in is actually perfect for this. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Before we get started here, it's a good idea to make sure you're not all charged up with static electricity as it is possible to damage your hardware through an electrostatic discharge. Uh, you can buy one of those oh-so-stylish looking anti-static wrist straps and use it. Or you can do what I've always done and simply ground yourself by touching something metal. Like your case. The physical process for installing a CPU is actually very simple. It is slightly different on an AMD system compared to an Intel system, so for your viewing enjoyment, I'll be demonstrating both. Starting with Intel, you'll notice on the retention bracket that there's a triangle stamped into the metal here. This triangle corresponds to a little gold triangle on your actual CPU to use as a guide to help you know which way to orient your CPU as you are installing it into the socket. On Intel's LGA sockets, you can see all these little pins here on the motherboard socket itself. These pins are what makes contact with the pads on the bottom of your CPU, thus connecting your CPU to the motherboard and allowing it to do its job. These pins are fragile, so it's a good idea not to touch them if you don't have to. Also, when handling your CPU, make sure to hold it by the edges. You're going to want to avoid touching the contacts on the bottom uh, if you can help it. To install your CPU, First, open the CPU retention cover by pushing down on the little retention arm here, and then push it away from the CPU socket, just like so. Lift the retention arm up, which will then lift the retention bracket up and away from the socket. Now take your CPU from its little plastic clamshell and gently place it into the socket, making sure it's properly oriented using that little gold triangle. You can then lower the retention bracket back into place. Uh, make sure the prongs here properly hook underneath the retention screw and then lower the retention arm and lock it back into place. This does take a little bit of force to do. Don't be afraid, just push it on down and lock it in. And with that, your CPU is now installed. Installing an AMD processor is pretty similar to installing an Intel processor, but you'll notice that instead of the pins being on the motherboard, they are on the CPU. Once again, hold the CPU by the sides and avoid touching the pins as best you can. You'll notice the same little gold triangle here as we had on the Intel CPU. And if you look closely at the socket on the motherboard, there is a corresponding triangle there as well uh, to help you correctly orient the CPU. Very much like the Intel CPU, you need to lift the retention arm by pushing it ever so slightly to the side and then lifting up. We can then properly orient our CPU using the little triangles and then gently place the CPU into the socket. The only thing left to do now is lower the retention arm back into place and boom! We're done! Next up we have memory installation. Installing memory is even easier than installing a CPU. but before you just go throwing it in, you'll want to consult your motherboard manual to see which RAM slots to use. Because 
if you're not going to be populating all the slots and only using one or two, there are certain slots you're going to want to use to get the best performance out of them. Once you know what slots to install to, open the latches like so. Then take your RAM module, locate the notch between the pins, and then simply match that notch with this little guy here, and then insert the module into the socket, pressing down firmly until it fully seats and the latch or latches lock into place. With the CPU and RAM installed, we are just about ready to install our motherboard in our case, but before we do that, I think it's a good idea to first install your CPU cooler. As a first time builder, you may be planning to just go ahead and use the stock heat sink and fan that came with your processor, uh, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, someday you may want to swap it out for something a little more robust, but despite them not being anything special, uh, they do get the job done. For those of you using aftermarket coolers in lieu of the stock cooler, I'm sorry to say that this portion of the video isn't going to be much help to you. There are about a bazillion different aftermarket CPU coolers out there, and many of them have their own unique way of mounting them, so... Yeah... That, that's why they make installation instructions. You should look at them. Today I'm just going to be sticking to showing how to install the stock heatsink, but the reason that I like to install my CPU cooler before mounting the motherboard in the case is because of aftermarket coolers. Some aftermarket coolers are freaking gigantic, and installing them after your motherboard is securely screwed into your case is... Oh, yeah, pretty much impossible. If you bought your CPU new, then the included cooler will most likely have thermal paste already applied to it. Uh, for the stock Intel cooler, all you need to do is position the heatsink over your CPU, align the four mounting pins with the corresponding mounting holes in your motherboard, lower the cooler into place, and then press on the buttons here, locking them down two at a time. Uh, you'll want to press down two pins that are diagonal from each other to avoid putting too much pressure on any one corner of the CPU. After pushing in the first two pins, you can then push in the remaining two. And last, but certainly not least, take your fan cable and plug it onto the CPU fan header on your motherboard and done. For those of you that chose an AMD processor, installing the AMD stock cooler is uh, slightly more difficult than installing an Intel stock cooler because it's a much less intuitive design. Uh, place the cooler onto your CPU and then take one side of the retention bracket, slip the notch over the mounting hook on the motherboard, then repeat the process on the other side. You can then flip this handle over, which then tightens things up, securing the cooler to the CPU. Just like on the Intel CPU, you can then connect your fan cable to the motherboard fan header and we are now ready to install our motherboard into our case. If your CPU cooler does not have pre-applied thermal paste, then you'll need to first buy some thermal paste, unless of course your cooler came with some, and then apply some to your CPU prior to mounting your CPU cooler. Two of the most popular application methods are the line and the P. For the line method, you simply lay out a line of thermal paste like so, right down the center of your CPU. And the P method, you simply put a little circle of thermal paste in the center of your CPU that is roughly the diameter of a P. That's why they call it the P method. It has nothing to do with, you know, what, you, you know what I mean. So in my last video, I only briefly talked about cases because cases are really about personal preference. Whether you want a side panel window or not, support for water cooling, uh, space for optical drives, or whatever is 
really up to you and, you know, what will fit into your budget. I don't really have any good advice for choosing a case other than find a case that you love and, and never let go. When installing your motherboard into your case, the very first thing you want to do is pop your IO shield into place. There's nothing quite as annoying as getting your motherboard all screwed into place and then noticing that your IO shield is still sitting in your motherboard box. At least so I've heard. I've learned this from watching other people make this mistake because I've never done that before. So with your I.O. shield properly installed, you are then free to drop your motherboard into place. Well, don't, don't really drop it. It's, it's more of a gently put it into place kind of thing. Line up all the outputs with their appropriate holes on your I.O. shield, and then lower your motherboard onto the standoffs that are hopefully already installed in the appropriate positions. If the standoffs in your case are not already installed or are not in the correct places to properly align with the mounting holes on your motherboard, you will of course need to move them or install them in the appropriate places. On a standard ATX motherboard, there are usually nine screws to put in, three along the top, three through the center, and three along the bottom. Well, uh, there you go. Uh, pretty easy stuff, huh? I hope that you are now feeling more confident in your ability to go and do this all yourself. Thanks so much for hanging out and watching the video. If you enjoyed it, then please hit the thumbs up button before you go, and also consider subscribing to my channel. And if you have a question for me, or just have something you just feel like you gotta say, uh, there's the comment section that you can use for that kind of thing. For those of you eager to learn what to do next and are watching this close to the time of the original upload, episode 3 is coming, so uh, be ready for that. And for those of you watching this sometime in the future after episode 3 has been released, if you're ready for it, then you can go right on and watch it now. Thanks again for watching. I hope that you have a great day. We'll see you next time.